Here, I present details on our design and examination of the artifact Stairway to Heaven. This artifact uses gamified virtual reality to contextualize mindful breath awareness training as a journey through a virtual world. This work was made possible through collaboration between researchers and doctors at Northeastern University and Massachusetts General Hospital. I'm Nathan Miner, and I'm a PhD student in Northeastern's Interdisciplinary Design and Media Program and a research fellow at Massachusetts General Hospital. This slide shows the virtual version of our lab at MGH. The OASIS is the Orthopedic Augmentation, Surgical Innovation and Interactive Systems Lab, and in the lab, our research examines interactive media for clinical diagnostics and therapeutics. My background is in fine arts, where I worked for over 20 years before branching into science. In my creative practice, I focus on immersive artworks, and in this image, I'm standing with my feet in trays of paint, immersing myself in the painting process. In my art practice, I create large-scale abstractions that can stimulate a dynamic quality of the viewing experience. This painting, Chimera, is about 18 feet long and hangs on a shallow curved wall. Because of the curve and the composition, moving around in front of it creates interesting illusions. Wanting to make dynamic viewing experiences, I began exploring interactive media for creating artwork. I walked all over this painting while making it, and viewing it required walking its length. But with virtual reality, I saw a new way to make my artwork interactive, immersive, and functional. Beyond pure aesthetics, I'm now working in some aesthetics by integrating biofeedback into immersive, interactive, and gamified VR. VR and interactive media allow us to create worlds that we can inhabit. In this slide, we have the campfire scene at the end of Stairway to Heaven, where the virtual wilderness extends into a twilight atmosphere. In virtual worlds, Depending on the mechanics we build and how we engineer inputs and interactions, engaging some aesthetics in VR can be not only aesthetically interesting, but also functionally transformative. In Stairway to Heaven, we asked how using breathing to interact with a virtual world could support mindful self-regulation of breathing at a therapeutic frequency of less than 10 breaths per minute. To do this, we used a force sensor respiration belt that when worn around the abdomen, signals the magnitude of diaphragmatic breathing. Superimposed on our tranquil island scene here is a participant wearing a VR headset and a respiration belt. On the island, the campfire is in the top right of this image, which is stage three of the gamified journey. Starting on the left of the island, in stage one, users progress by breathing to teleport from checkpoint to checkpoint through a forest. In stage two, they continue moving along a ridge and up to the top of the hill on the right. Users must complete 100 diaphragmatic breaths to journey across the island. In stage one, the number of breaths needed to progress increases by one at each checkpoint until it reaches 10 at the 10th marker. Then, in stage two, the requirement decreases by one until the finish. This progression design makes learning the breathing mechanic quick and easy up front more demanding in the middle, and rewarding at the end. In diaphragmatic breathing, also known as belly breathing, the diaphragm contracts and relaxes to pull in air and to exhale. This illustration by Nicole Fuller shows the diaphragm beneath the lungs and the vagus nerve, drawn in yellow, intertwining with the lungs, heart, stomach, and intestines. Controlled diaphragmatic breathing can influence the parasympathetic nervous system, promoting relaxation and reducing stress. Stairway to Heaven starts at an onboarding platform at the edge of the island. Users are presented with an overview of their path through the virtual world and narration that guides them through the sensor calibration. Monitoring the user's breathing during this phase allows us to customize the application's thresholds for counting the diaphragmatic breaths used for progression. Calibration connects the user's breathing to a heads-up display. This image, shows the heads-up display as a green line with numerical values at either end. The line is a progress bar indicating the user's breath has reached the maximum value. The number on the left, displaying a zero, shows the user has not yet completed a full breathing cycle. The value on the right shows that four breaths are required before the user can progress to the next checkpoint. As the user exhales, the green line will empty and the display will update with a count of one on the left and three on the right. At the next checkpoint in this stage, the mindfulness audio guide begins.
The mindfulness guide encourages users to relax and breathe deeply while paying attention to the sensations of their body. In the second stage, checkpoints are marked by blue halos of light, and the path takes players up a steeply sloping hillside. After reaching the top and completing stage two, players are then teleported to the campfire scene and encouraged to take ten more slow, deep breaths. It is important to note that in Stairway to Heaven, users self-regulate the pace of their breathing. The application requires users to hit the maximum and minimum sensor values with each breath cycle according to their calibration, but they do so at their own pace. In this design, we use gamification and the progression mechanic, along with the audio guidance to support players' breathing at a therapeutic frequency without explicitly pacing them to do so. The values from the respiration belt measure the user's diaphragmatic breathing. We recorded each user separately before, during, and after the VR experience to see how the experience would alter their breathing. This slide shows the raw data recorded by the sensor for participant 18. On the left of the plot, we recorded the user while they watched a video about diaphragmatic breathing and got situated for the VR experience. During VR and following the calibration measures, this user exhibited steady, deep breathing with consistent amplitudes for breathing cycles. By contrast, participant 14's breathing amplitudes were much more varied. This difference between users is interesting and highlights something important to note. Even though the progression mechanics and artifact were the same for everyone, mindfulness and breathing are highly personal experiences, and the differences we find in the breathing recordings tell part of the story of each user's individual journey. To gain a higher level view of user behavior, we summarized engagement trends based on averages of a user's breathing frequencies during four periods of the journey, and then we grouped users into clusters based on common patterns. To do this, we took the mean and standard deviations from the first 45 breaths in stage one, the 10 breaths at the midway point, the 45 breaths in stage two, and the 10 breaths in stage three. Our cluster analysis of the trends in users' breathing patterns resulted in four groups. These graphs show the per cluster averages for the breathing frequency trends. The dark blue line shows the mean breathing frequency and the light blue shading shows the standard deviation of the user's breathing frequency in each period, while the dotted red line shows a 10 breaths per minute benchmark for therapeutic breathing. The seven users in cluster two on the top right show the intended results of our design. Interacting with the artifact supported these users in breathing at less than 10 breaths per minute for the whole journey. They also slowed their breathing over time and breathed with greater regularity. Looking at the breathing trends of participant 13 as an example user, we see that they started above 10 breaths per minute, but achieved a slower pace by the journey's midpoint. Their breathing frequency varied more in stage two, but their mean frequency remained in the therapeutic range. And in the end, they finished the experience breathing slower and with greater regularity than at the start. Looking at the time series data for participant 13's breathing, we see that during the second stage, when their breathing frequency was more varied, the amplitude of their breath cycles was also varied, and they missed a few progression thresholds. The quantitative data tells us how the user was breathing, but not why they were breathing this way. In this case, participant 13 offered an explanation during their interview. I liked the reflection on the water. It was very calming, and after a while, when the water was there actually, I was so calm that I preferred to close my eyes and just listen to the music and what they were talking about. It really calmed me down, and I preferred to close my eyes for a little bit to get into the meditation a bit more. This feedback represents the user's interest in the mindfulness components of our design and reveals a conflict stemming from multiple potential objectives for users. Reflecting on the design and user experience of our artifact, Stairway to Heaven provided a context for mindfulness meditation, it offered a space to relax in a peaceful virtual environment, and it delivers the breath awareness training. While breath awareness was our goal, users also felt inclined to meditate and relax during the experience, and balancing these desires was sometimes felt to be at odds with the progression requirements of the breathing training. Still, Gamifying progression to support users engaging with diaphragmatic breathing and using the respiration sensor as input was effective and shows the promise of engineering, HCI, and design to make new kinds of experiential therapies using immersive media. 
It is an exciting time to be working at this interesting intersection of media, technology, and interaction design, and a pleasure to share Stairway to Heaven here at CHI 2024. Thank you.